we bless you, Father. We bless you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord Jesus. There is none like unto you. You are unique. You are one of the kind. You are almighty. You are powerful. You are gracious. You are love. And we bless you. We give you all the glory and the honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Uh, we may be seated. Amen. Uh, it's another blessed day today. Amen. And it's an honor and a privilege for me to be standing here. Uh, when I get this chance, I take it serious. I thank God that I'm given another chance to come and stand before you and speak about no one but Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. No other president, no other king, but the king of kings and lord of lords. Amen. So we are going to speak about Jesus Christ outside the boat and Jesus Christ inside the boat. Amen. Jesus outside the boat and Jesus inside the boat. Our, we've got two scripture readings. One is in Matthew chapter 14. Let's open our Bibles. Matthew chapter 14. We're going to read verse 22. And we'll jump other verses. I will explain to them. These are familiar scriptures. But just to lay a background, I'll explain what happened. And I don't skip all other verses because there are contradictions or some other things I'm trying to run away from. I will explain everything. If we're going to read all the script, uh, the verses, it will take us long. So let's read Matthew 14, verse 24. It reads, we're going to read 24 and jump to 32 and 33 that's our first scripture reading but the ship was now in the midst of the sea tossed with waves for the wind was contrary verse 32 and when they were come into the ship the wind ceased 33 then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Amen. Now we're going to read the second scripture reading. It's found in Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. It reads as follows. We're going to read verse 37 to 41. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. Verse 38. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they woke him up, saying unto him, Master, Carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Verse 40. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said unto one another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Amen. We may be seated. Thank you very much. The Bible is telling us of two incidences. The first one we read is from Matthew. 
is telling us about when Jesus Christ gave orders to his disciples that they should go to the other side of the sea and he remained behind praying and dispersing the other crowd and the Bible said in the middle of the night when it was dark the wind and the waves arose and attacked the boat that all the disciples were inside it those people were not just amateurs most of them were fishermen they knew how to maneuver and if they pred could predict the weather and the sea behavior they could have told jesus christ we can't go the other side it's dangerous but there was no sign that there will be danger in this trip they were confident that today the weather is okay the tide is low people who stayed in the uh, coastland they know they will tell you they can see the cloud and see the sun the moon and predict what kind of behavior is the sea going to have this evening if it's a cool day they'll tell you we can go deep fishing we can go uh, night fishing but these ones they were fishermen too they had experience but that day their experience did not work the bible says while they were still in the middle of the sea then the wind arose and the waves came buffeted against the boat as fishermen they know what they must do they tried with their experience hard working but it did not work the bible says until the boat was full of water and suddenly in that dark they saw a figure of a human being walking on top of the water it is impossible human beings don't float they sink but this one was walking on top of the water now this is what happened then when they were scared because that they, they had some stories about people who died in the sea that sometimes they attack those who are fishing at night and they thought this is a ghost they all cried with fear thinking this ghost is going to overturn their boat and they'll all die and Jesus was not there it was a hopeless situation as they were crying Jesus from far he was the man walking on top of their own problem he was not struggling he was not swimming he was on top of their problem the same sea that was scaring them he was in charge he was tending the problem was beneath his feet he was lord even in the middle of trouble and he said fear not because it is I other people thought oh it's true it's a ghost can you hear it shouting now what is going to happen there is one thing I've learned from this scripture Peter knew the voice of the Lord even though he could not see him but he was familiar to this voice and he said this must be the Lord and he cried back to the voice and said lord if it is you please command me to come to you but not struggling like we've been struggling here my experience as a fisherman could not help i want to be on top of this problem just like you i want to walk like you're walking you are doing the impossible i want to also do the impossible he knew 
I just imagine this man. Other said, Peter, you're crazy. You're a fisherman. You can't walk on the ground, on the water. Peter took his life and put it on his feet. That if I sink, I will die. But if the Lord will command me to do this, I will survive. And then he took his first leg on the water. It was not hard, tired road. It was still water. But still he believed. He took this other leg off from the boat and on top of the ground, of the water. Suddenly, he started floating. What is this teaching us? The boat is a type of our lives. A boat is a type of our lives. We are here on earth and sometimes, most of the times, many times, even though it does not matter how experienced are you, there are winds that are coming. Suddenly one day, everything is turning against you. The things that you are used to, it doesn't matter how much you prepare yourself. Sometimes even our preparations, they seem to be more problematic. These people, they were fishermen, experienced. They were born, I can say, so to speak, in the water. The first thing they learned, is it was not a bicycle, but it was swimming. And suddenly, they can't survive. They can see their lives is coming to an end. Jesus is outside there in the boat. And Peter cried to Jesus. Sometimes Jesus is outside your life. And your life is showing you crazy things. You see ghosts. Life seems to be attacking you from left to right, up and down. The boat was going up, was going down, was spinning, losing direction. And our lives are just like that boat. And we don't know what to do. Our country is going through problems. And it's not only our country. The world is going through problems. Where is our experience? When you say you have solutions, they say, no, 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 wait a minute. Everybody was ready for vac vaccination. They said, wait a minute. Some people are having this problem with this. This one is this. This one is this. With all the wisdom that we have, when Jesus is outside, all the wisdom we have have become void and useless. We need Jesus. Peter went to Jesus. And as he was going to Jesus, the attacks came again. It doesn't mean when you are serious about God, you go to church every Sunday, you are tithing, you are giving your offering, you are fasting. It does not mean the devil will leave you alone. I used to preach in the tents, telling people, you want to receive Jesus Christ? This will be the last day of your problems. That was not the truth. I experience problems while I'm preaching the same thing. Myself. But for people to come to Jesus, I didn't know how to beg them, how to persuade them. I just said you have problems. But if you come to Jesus, that will be the end of your problem. It was not the full gospel. These people are friends of Jesus, but they're having a problem. They're facing Nature is coming against them. And Peter asks Jesus, this is not a matter of, is your mother, is your father a Christian? No, no. Is your friend a Christian? Peter chose, made a choice. Even though everybody was discouraging him, he said, you want to stay in the boat? Stay in the boat. I rather die trying. There are other people who say, where is God when we are facing Corona? And they give, we give up. Don't give up. 
Peter left the crowd and went to, to Jesus because he knew the voice of Jesus. And then when he went there, the attack came. And he started to sink. He cried out, not to his friends, but to Jesus. He said, Lord, save me. He didn't pray for something else, but for salvation. I don't know how far Jesus was, but he didn't pray twice. He didn't shout twice, just once. Suddenly, Jesus, the Son of God, the creator of heaven and earth, ran. God running to help you. He's willing, he's waiting for you to say, Lord Jesus, save me. And as he ran, the Bible says he grabbed Peter's hand lifted him up and were walking two of them going back i don't know i like to use my imagination these others are in the boat they are scared peter is coming back with a ghost but as they are approaching they realize no no it is not a ghost it is the lord and the bible said immediately when they entered the boat the wind stopped. The waves just come down. It was like it was. There was never even a breeze of wind. The problem is solved because Jesus is inside now. Inside their boat. Inside their lives. And they said, In Tiso. I heard you sing, uh, singing a uh, Shangan song. In Mozambique, we say, In Tiso. It is the truth. You are the son of the living God. Jesus Christ is still the Lord. Jesus Christ is still a healer. I don't care all those liars, so-called prophets, how they were doing miracles, faking miracles. That does not change Jesus. He's still the healer. It doesn't matter. Corona can kill millions. Jesus is still the savior. He's still the healer. We must not be intimidated so much and forget about Jesus. He is still healing. The Bible says anything, any sickness, even things that are not yet here, the name of Jesus is above any other name. AIDS, Corona, TB, cancer, anything, the name of Jesus. If you can call like Peter and say, Jesus, save me, not save us. He didn't pray for his friends. They needed help too. But he said, first save me. You cannot help other people if you are not help yourself. You can't give somebody what you don't have. You know, when you're poor, you meet somebody who's poor, you want to help them. How can you help them? You are in the need of the same thing they need. You have to have something they don't have and give them. Now, here, the second scripture we read, this time Jesus is inside. Are we not all suffering like everybody? Are we not all scared of uh, dying like everybody? The whole world is dying. Christians are dying. They are laughing at us and say, where is your God? This time Jesus was inside. They were not pretending. The Bible said he was sleeping. And the wind came again. The same problem came again with Jesus inside. What is happening? Like I said, it does not mean you have Jesus, you won't have problems. You will have Jesus and have problems, but you will know what to do when the problems are coming. We are not immune to the problems. There are many Christians, pastors, pro uh, prophets, presidents are dying every day. Kings, 
are dying of corona. We must never forget the name of Jesus. It is the only remedy we have. Let's not give up. The Bible says they went to Jesus. They didn't go to Peter and say, Peter, you've got experience. You remember you walked on the water. No, no, no. This time they said, he's inside. They went to Jesus, shook him, and said, Lord, don't you care that we are perishing? This is the prayer we have to pray to Jesus. A prayer of desperation. That where are you? Sometimes our Jesus is asleep. We got so much used to him. We even forget that he's inside. And it's been, you wake up in the morning, he want to greet you morning. You greet your children, greet your wife, greet everybody at work on the road. Hello, hi, hi. Eta, who said sharp, sharp. But never greeted Jesus. Coming back from work, greet everybody. How was your day? How was the school? How was the work? Hey, okay. You end up going to sleep. Jesus is running around you. No morning, no afternoon, no uh, good night. You just go to sleep like he is not existing. Here, I believe he was ignored. And he said, ah, I'm trying to talk with them. I'm trying to guide them. They are experienced. Let them go. He went to sleep. Is your Jesus inside your heart sleeping? Is my Jesus inside my heart sleeping? And when he's sleeping, it doesn't matter. He was in the same situation, but he never woke up. Even though they were crying, seeing death in their face, but he slept, Jesus will never answer you because you are crying. He will never respond to your situation because of, you say, I'm miserable. I'm an orphan. Even God does not care. He will never answer your prayer. He will answer your prayer when you go straight to him. In faith. Not in uh, sympathy. But in faith. Not in fear. But in faith. They went to him. They said, Lord, don't you care that you are dying? And the Bible said he rose up. He didn't say, He didn't say, crusading Gadara met people there. I'm going to fight demons. No, no, no. He woke up. This morning, we can search ourselves. Is my Jesus outside? Or is my Jesus inside? If he's in inside, is the storm still going, raging against me? If he's raging, what is Jesus doing? Maybe my Jesus is sleeping too. It's high time that I go and shake him and ask him, Lord, save me. The Bible says he rose up, he looked at the sea. I just imagine, one time I was sitting uh, on a beach with my son innocent he was about one year old a wave came in i was looking at it asking hey god you're great look this water is alive it's going up in down and there was a big cargo ship there it was not sinking and i was thinking about the scripture how come peter was sinking and the big boat is not sinking God, you are great. While I'm still thinking like that, the wave just passed the barriers and came to the beach, swept me with my son. I didn't know where it's north, south, east, west, up or down. When I woke up, it was sent everywhere, in the ear, hair, in the pockets. And I realized, this sea has its own mind. And this life is like that. It has its own mind. You don't know. You wake up today. You don't know what's going to happen the whole day. 
Those who died yesterday, they were not stupid. You woke up this morning. It's not because you are more clever than them. It's God's grace. We don't have, I don't know, a button, a secret code of waking up in the morning. My father went to sleep, never woke up. A friend of mine at the uh, same street with Dr. Tailanis went to sleep. A friend of mine. In the morning, he was no more. So, it's time for us to wake Jesus up and say, Lord, we're coming back to you. Jonah refused when God told him, go to Nineveh. He wanted to go somewhere. But a king who was a heathen, when he had the message, he told the nation, let us pray and fast. They prayed, they fasted. God turned his heart. And the pastor, prophet Jonah, was angry. Say, you see, I knew you are too gracious. You are not going to fulfill your promises. You say in three days' time you're going to kill them. You don't kill them. It seems like some of us will like it when we see people miserable. When we see God punishing people. But let me tell you, this is a new dispensation. It is not the dispensation of law and judgment. It is the dispensation, the time of grace and mercy. God loves the whole world. They believe or they don't believe. Still God loves them. Can we close your eyes? If I say something, we'll be out here in a long run. So I don't want to waste your time. I'm going to repeat myself. It's not going to help you. It's Jesus outside. And the danger of Jesus being outside for a long time and you come to church that's very much dangerous when you want to give your heart to Jesus you want to invite Jesus inside Satan will say to you uh uh what will all these Christians say you've been in this church for so long you are in the music you are in the church choir. You are doing everything. You are in the committee. But you know. I can tell you Jesus is outside. Only you know. You can tell me. This is a secret that God has done. Given to mankind. The only secret that only you know and only God knows. Is he inside or is it outside? When he's inside, is he sleeping? Or do you want to wake him up? Sometimes, even churches are full of people and Jesus is outside. Because some people don't want Jesus in the, in the church. They want their own programs in the church not Jesus we can bring God back into our lives into our community and when he is sleeping we can ask him to wake up miracles will start to happen now healings will start to happen now to God Corona is nothing he's waiting for us to wake him up and say Lord don't you care that you are dying and healing will start. People will be discharged. You'll see it on, on television. 100% recovered. No more new cases. You will say, eh, is it true? Yes, there is nothing impossible with God. In Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, I come before you. You spoke to me spoke to everybody through your word this is an opportunity for us to reconcile to invite to rekindle 
our faith, our stance with you, to rededicate our lives. I pray God for each and everyone, including myself. We need revival. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the power. We are inviting you into our hearts. We are asking you to wake up. We need this revival. We need a cure. Whether it's going to come through prayer or science, but Lord, enough is enough. People have been dying like flies all over the world. Money and all the medicine can help. We need you. In Jesus' mighty name. Heal our land. Heal our countries. Continents. Heal the whole world. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless.